Okay, folks, this video is a little kind of a tutorial sort of on how to get butterfly caterpillars to break diapause. Uh, many northern species of butterflies, you know, they, they hibernate during the winter during some form. Some species hibernate as an egg. Some species hibernate as a pupa. Some species like the question mark and the goatweed butterfly actually hibernate as adults. They actually overwinter as adults. Uh, some species, however, have a habit of hibernating as caterpillars. Now, these are tawny emperors. And as you can see, we have, uh, on in this very picture here, we have a chrysalis, which we have here a prepupal larva, which is about to make its chrysalis. And then we've got these five caterpillars that are much, much smaller. They're probably third instar. They are actually siblings of the chrysalis and the prepupal the pre larva. They actually had, were laid at the same, the eggs were laid at the same time. They had the same upbringing. And for whatever reason, some of these guys decided to go into a hibernative state and they are diapausing as caterpillars. And it's really annoying because we're trying to breed these things. All right, so these guys are kind of annoying because they're third, maybe, I think third in star and siblings of the pupa and the prepupal larva, but they have decided to call it, call it quits. And they are, they spun a big silk pad, as you can see, actually, they're, they're borrowing a silk pad that was spun by this chrysalis. The larva before it made its chrysalis makes a big silk pad. Um, Tony emperors have a, a really large silk pad, as you can see, this, all this spiraling little strands of silk all came from this prepupal larva and then this pupa. And what these guys are doing, instead of wasting the energy of making their own silk, they found a nice big silk pad on their own. So they're just using that to hang on and they'll just sit there. And some of them turn brown. Uh, this That brown larva is actually very healthy. There's nothing unhealthy about it, but it's just the color that it turned in its diapause state. So it's waiting, they're waiting to, you know, like in the winter months, this species will, uh, you know, it starts to get colder. The hackberry trees, the larval host plant, they don't put out new growth. They might go into this kind of hibernative state and wait for the tree to put out new growth in the spring. So they might wait three or four months in this state and they'll just sit there like this, hopefully not get eaten by birds. A lot of times they had, like they make a housing out of leaves or whatever and and so on so yeah th this video guys is gonna i'm gonna give you a few ideas on how to break this how do you get how do you get these guys to wake up in captivity and begin feeding again because it would be really annoying for them to sit there sit there sit there and you forget about it all of a sudden they wake up to start feeding and you you have put no new growth in there because a couple months have gone by and they haven't you know they haven't fed so i'm gonna give you a few ideas on how to break diapause with tawny emperors and other butterfly caterpillars like them. All right, first of all, I wanna show you why I think they went into diapause. This is the area where I've been raising them to keep them out of my wife's hair. I have them in this closet. This is my little bug research closet that's in our Florida room. And I have them in this big container and I'm just gonna pull it out. As you can see, it's dark because it's in a dark closet and let me close this real quick. And it's just out of sight, out of mind for the rest of the family. But, you know, us bug nerds have to have our little hobby. So in the closet they go. And here's what we've done. Like most of the, I say, I probably had about 250 caterpillars between these two containers. And I'm going to show you most of them are doing very, very well. In fact, they're, they're, all, they're all doing very well. Uh, I've got really big, fat, juicy final instar caterpillars like this one. He'll make his pupa very soon. Uh, they're tearing the heck out of these leaves. So look, here's some diapausing caterpillars right there. So that's a sibling. Look, these little guys here are siblings to this great big one. They were from the same egg cluster, but for whatever reason, 
this group decided to diapause. So we gotta try and figure out how to break that diapause. But as you can see, we've got a lot of, here's another pre-pupil, he's about to make his chrysalis. Uh, let me see what else we got in here. There's a chrysalis underneath this leaf. Uh, they're starting to do their work nice. They're, they're starting to pupate. We've got another chrysalis here, and I have to go through this container and actually harvest the chrysalis out. But look what they do. So here's a good example of a little housing they make. The caterpillars that are that are going to go and hibernate on us, or they'll take a few leaves and they'll silk them together. And this is kind of hard to show because they're all stuck together. They'll silk them together and make a housing for themselves. And that's what protects them from vision of birds and other predators, things that would eat them uh, while they're kind of in that defenseless state. So anyway, the, the caterpillars are very healthy. They're doing very well. They're feeding. I'm very, very satisfied. However, about half of them are going into like this hibernated, hibernative state. And I honestly don't have the patience to wait until they decide to wake up on their own. I'm gonna try and get them to wake up. And one of the things that, um, you know, the, the conditions that probably put them in the hibernative state is number one, the dark closet. The dark closet, you know, in the winter time, the photo period is shorter and that might be a trigger that the the caterpillars might see, oh, it's time to time to hibernate because the days are shorter. The plant's going to stop putting out new leaves, and let's let's go and wait until the plant puts out better things to eat. So that's one example of why they might hibernate. Example number two is we like to keep the air conditioning pretty chilly in the house. We it's down the mid to lower 70s most of the time, and sometimes that it's by itself in combination with the dark closet can be lower 70s. That's probably springtime or, or fall time temperatures in a lot of places. And so uh, what we're gonna, oh, the other, the other thing is if your food, uh, the third thing that might cause them to diapause is if their food quality is not good, then, which I haven't allowed that to happen. My, I'm, I've kept my food quality really good. But sometimes if the food quality is not good, they'll go into hibernative state until the plant that they're feeding on puts out new growth. So one of the things that we're going to do to try to break that diapause is I'm going to try to, for as much time in the day as my wife will let me, put these containers next to a window where there's more light. We're actually in the middle of the summer here in South Florida. Uh, there's going to be more light. It's going to be warmer for them next to the window because they're gonna get radiation from the sun. I wouldn't leave them in direct sunlight because that could actually create more of a, actually more of a problem than you're solving. But guys, that's a basic way. If you really feel like kind of saucy about it, you can actually take your caterpillars that are hibernating, put them in a container, like a Tupperware or something like that, and put them in the refrigerator. You can leave them in the refrigerator for a couple weeks actually and they'll stay hibernating really well. These, this is with more with temperate species, species that live north of central Florida um, in the northern United States. Uh, all species of butterflies have some degree of hibernation in their, um, in their DNA, they, they, they do it. You know, that's just part of life for them because it gets cold and they have to wait things out for the winter. So you can put them in the refrigerator and then Wait a few weeks, a month, whatever, then take them out and then, you know, pop them into a container with some fresh host plant. A lot of times they wake up. If you, you know, some insects are delicate, guys. I mean, I'm going to pop this container open and see how this one's doing. Insects are delicate. So, you know, sometimes when you're trying to pre, uh, create artificial environments in captivity or, or that, that actually trying to recreate environments in the wild in captivity. Sometimes it doesn't go well and, you know, that's part of the deal. But if you're careful, you don't overdo it, you can get a lot of good success with raising caterpillars, breaking diapause, just by using these few simple tactics. Give them more light, uh, give them a little bit higher temperature. If you need to try and shock them into breaking the diapause, um, I, I might try that next. 
you put them in a Tupperware, put them in the refrigerator for a couple weeks, and then take them out and then put them back on the leaves. A lot of times they'll just wake right up, start feeding. So hope you learned something. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know how if you have any success. Uh, some species are a little bit more temperamental than others, but um, that's what we've done in the past to get caterpillars to break diapause. So don't forget to subscribe. Take care, guys. Let's get out there and breed some really, really cool butterflies like the Tony Emperor. He's going to be a butterfly soon. Pretty cool.